Hello everyone, and welcome back to my Hard Time series in Kerbal Space Program 0.25. I begin this episode by by basically relying on planetary alignment to figure out my fate. Um, this is somewhat astrological, but really it's a matter of uh, finding the right transfer point. And, and I'm just waiting to see which of these planets is going to come into the right phase angle with Kerbin first. Probably it would be Eve, but I'm not sure. I think we've already done the easily accessible science around Eve. I'm, I'm out for science this time. Really need to get a lot of science. And so just seeing what's going to happen first. Um, phase angle to Duna is, of course, uh, well, we've already done Duna quite a lot. Uh, Drez is 82 degrees. Joule is 96 degrees. And then Elu is 180 well wait a minute yeah that's yeah we're, we're approaching Elu first it looks like 101 degrees that's about right maybe a little bit less than 101 degrees and we also have a jewel situation at the same time that's about 96 degrees as well uh, is it I don't know, uh, actually the angle of Elu is sort of weird. I don't know, I think I shouldn't have trusted. Maybe I looked at the wrong number on the protractor. Anyway, <laughs> uh, alright, so um, how about uh, something to Elu and something to Jewel, huh? Yeah, I think that's what I'm in the mood for. Uh, yeah. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, this is the semi cheaty clipper. And, and you know, I, I didn't uh, use part clipping, but I did use the trick that I've done in previous series. I don't know if uh, uh, putting a tank like that, right? And uh, I, I don't consider it too bad because I could have just put it like that as well. And uh, it's just a matter of looks. So it would have all fit perfectly if I had just done it the other way. And it probably wouldn't have produced more drag because of the weird aerodynamics of KSP. So anyway, uh, otherwise there is no uh, no cheatiness about it. These sure don't clip. And yep, it's just a bunch of LVT 45s. I still haven't unlocked the 2.5 meter parts, and I've got the science to do it, but I'm just going to go with this for now. And uh, yeah, I'm going to aim this at either Jewel or Elu, whichever. Uh, seems like this is better aimed at. It's got lander legs. I think that'll probably mean aiming it at Jewel and landing on one of the moons is probably best. Maybe Tylo would be good. Um, Elu, I don't know if we're gonna be able to. S well, maybe uh, yeah, I don't know if we're gonna be able to slow down enough with this in order to get into orbit around uh, Elu and then land. But uh, yeah, uh, maybe we'll just check that out on this transfer. Okay, so here's the clipper on the launch pad. SAS on, throw up. This is obviously a pure science mission, Ku Container, Science Junior, and the scientific instruments that we have. And uh, without further ado, I'm going to launch. The launch stage is of course disposable. I haven't really been doing reusability in this uh, series, except for the the Derek, right? The reusable single stage to orbit space plane. And that will be our core reusable system. And I'll expand on that as we go along. And you'll see some interesting developments on that front. Okay, booster separation. Booster separation is clean. Rocket continues. Okay, we have a periapsis. Wasn't 100% sure our launch stage would actually get us to this point. Looks like it's successful. We have a reasonable orbit and a tiny bit of fuel left in this stage. Alright. 
So, all looks well so far. Okay, I've sort of ended up plotting the Elu encounter first. It's, it's not really where the home... I think the home transfer would be like around here, but it's close enough. And it's uh, it's only because uh, actually we were getting the jewel encounter around the same place that we were getting the Elu encounter. Uh, I, I hope I said Elu right. Anyway, Elu encounter. Uh, so I've plotted it, and what it costs is uh, about a thousand nine hundred and seventy-five at at Kerbin, and then uh, mid-course plane change of a thousand two hundred twenty-four. Uh, my guess is we are not going to be landing on Elu. We're just going to be doing a flyby. Possibly if we dumped the parachutes and the landing legs, we would have been able to <laughs> then do a landing, but, uh, <laughs> uh, well, anyway. The parachute, obviously, we didn't need, but the landing legs, probably, if we were going to do a landing. So, yeah, just handling uh, Elu first, since I don't want to miss out on it. Pretty rare to get into alignment with Elu, and I want the science. I have a particular project in mind, just for you to know. It has to do with the Derek. Okay. Fortunately, this stage is also a LVT 45. I wanted this to look reasonably decent as a little spacecraft. So it's got a nice long plume thanks to the rocket. Okay, burn complete. Quite a bit different from the intended burn. We'll fix that on the mid-course plane change. Okay, I think I'm satisfied with 2,435 kilometers away. And so that mid-course plane changes in six days. This craft is underway. We have other craft to deal with. I'm going to extend its solar panels. Okay, so this is all set. Let's do another launch. Each of these launches uh, costs 77,600, by the way. And basically, I'm uh, totally using the funds that I got from my contract fulfillments, which we've done a lot of in this series so far. We've done a lot more contract fulfillment than actual science, so I'm just uh, making the conversion, if you will. Here we go. Booster separation is good. We continue on our way. You know, I might as well send a bunch of these to Jewel this time. No reason not to. It's definitely got enough Delta V to do stuff in the Jewel system, man. But it's only got one Science Junior and two Goo containers with no opportunity to reset. And, you know, we don't want to waste the chance of this particular particular transfer window. So might as well send a few more since we have the budget for it. Okay, that has us in a reasonable orbit. And I am now really going to plot for Jewel. We're only gonna send we are only going to send one to Elu. So that is not a destination for this probe. Okay, there we have a dual periapsis of 125 kilometers. This burn will be just 86 meters per second, thanks to the fact that Jewel isn't too far away from the plane of the system. Might as well get my solar panels out now. And while I'm here, I might as well rename this probe. So this is going to be Jewel Clipper One. If 
Val encounter. We seem to be encountering everything here. But we can't take a Val encounter because no atmosphere to slow us down. We need some atmosphere to slow us down. A lathe encounter we find. It's, uh, but uh, we're not getting that one. Oh. Did I speak too soon? Lathe encounter. Alright, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll plot for a lathe encounter. That's fine. We'll go there. Alright. Wow. Val, Leif, Tylo, we can get all of them. Anyway, here we are. And yes, we are on our way. Alright, uh, next, next one. Okay, so what I'm thinking is that one's probably going to be destined for Leif itself. And, but we've got contracts for Bop and Paul. So I'm hoping that this lander will be able to take care of the Bop and Paul science. But since we don't have to uh, plant a flag on either one of those, it doesn't seem like they're expecting us to send a Kerbal. So uh, this one is headed for Bopper Paul. Alright, so throttle up, SAS is on and locked. <laughs> Boost to separation is good. We continue. Alright, we're in orbit. I'm going to plot for Jewel again. Okay, this one is actually going to come in at a different time. I've got it on a more proper home and transfer. Uh, still not quite where the home and transfer ought to be, but the other ones were more fast transfers over here. And so they'll be coming in quicker on uh, Elu and Jewel. But this one, Probe 2, is going to be hitting uh, Jewel here. And uh, Periapsis 478 as plotted, though that's not going to be what it is once I actually do the burn. Alright, let me just uh, make sure I've got this renamed. So there's uh, Jewel... Clipper 2. And then we will proceed to our transfer point. Alright, we are go for burn. Okay. Jill Periapsis 447 seems to be a Tylo encounter too. Hopefully that's after the Jewel thing, not before it. Okay, before I forget, solar panels out. And it is all set for its mid-course plane change. So we've got three probes out. And I, I want to send one more to Drez, but we're not in position for that yet. I think the Drez one will actually be able to uh, land there and return back to Kerbin. I don't think these other ones are going to return back to Kerbin, even though they've got parachutes. Uh, just one parachute apiece, actually. Uh, so, so yeah. Maybe, maybe not. They're more general purpose landers. Uh, they have a parachute just in case that they can come back. Uh, it doesn't matter, because I needed something on the nose to uh, smooth out the lines. And the actual nano cone, the, the well, not nano cone, it's a standard NC nose cone, something like that. Uh, it's too heavy, so it's actually uh, the same mass as the parachute, so why not put a parachute? Okay, and so let us see from the tracking station which of these is going to come in first. Okay, so mid-course plane changes, the, the, really the uh, ELU clipper is in 6 days, 3 hours. The Jewel Clipper 1 is in 25 days, and the Jewel Clipper 2 is 6 days, 4 hours. Okay, so the Elu Clipper is first. Oop, need to get in there and rename this. Get its proper name. Okay, Elu Clipper. And on out into interplanetary space. Alright, here we go, make course plane change. 
huge one too, 1,200 meters per second, more than a Duna transfer. Thankfully we've got the powerful LVT-45 so it doesn't take too long. Ah, just short. Okay. Alright, now the lander itself. Let's see what's really going on here. I put lights on the lander, just not very many. Okay, 1,450 kilometers looks like the minimum there. All right, the next one was the Jewel, the Jewel Clipper 2. Maybe in retrospect, I should have given these different color lights, just to make it clear which one is which. But oh well. Note for a different mission. This time the transfer stage should have enough to also help us get around the dual system after we aero break, hopefully. And that's important because we're going to be trying to hit Bop and Paul. Okay, I think we're on a crash course for Jewel. That's good enough. Okay, that's done. Uh, Jewel. Jewel Clipper 1. Here we are with Jewel Clipper 1. And after this, I think I'm going to launch one of these at Drez. I haven't done much with Drez ever. Drez is sort of a forgotten planet in the middle of all this. Lathe Encounter. Now, this one I wanted to uh, get to Lathe, so. They think counter is fine. All right. Now, tracking station. So now I'm going to time warp until we are at the 82 degrees that we need to transfer to Elu. And these guys will still be on their way. It's going to take a while for them to get to where they're going. But we don't want to miss any possible transfers while they're they're doing their thing. Let me see, that looks like 82 degrees, but my attempts to eyeball these angles is horrible. And my use of protractor is marginally better, but that looks like 82, all right. Okay, let's launch one more, and this time we're going for Drez. Okay, I've modified the lighting to give it a, a more Drez-like color. It's got a sort of sepia tone to it. But, uh, okay, here we go. Throttle up, SAS is on, and launch. Okay, booster separation. All is well. The game is not throwing me any curveballs at this point yet. Hmm, I didn't do my pitch program quite as efficiently as I did in the previous times, so we're actually going to have to use this stage a bit to burn for orbit. That's alright since Drez is the easiest target out of all of them. Uh, the extra expenditure at this point won't be too bad so target the faint even the color of it really uh, makes it hard to notice that there's actually a planet there the, the forgotten world right there should get extra science points just for noticing that there's a planet there all right I'll take that 3,000 kilometers Pretty hefty plane change in the middle there. But first things first. We have to make this burn. It's already called Drez Clipper, by the way. 
so don't have to rename it now. Okay, this should be good enough. Make sure the solar panels are out. Okay, I think I'm just gonna adjust this with this mid-course maneuver. Okay, Dres Periapsis 574, if we make that burn correctly. And that's in 44 days, 556 meters per second. We've got the fuel. Now, uh, I think this, this will actually have to do its thing first, so we'll just stick with it. We'll watch these three as they head out, but this is the next thing we're going to have to take care of with this mid-course plane change. Okay, bye-bye, Kerbin. This is the only one that might actually return to Kerbin. Oops, passed it. But these mid-course plane changes, they have a significant margin for these sorts of things. Okay, here we go. Okay, uh, within 2,000 kilometers is fine. Uh, looks like we're arriving in 110 days here. That might be close to where the other missions are going to arrive. Let me check the tracking station.